Okay, we're gonna cover data store editor version three today. So we'll open up the plugin with the little icon here and this will pop up. Now this window can be docked anywhere in studio if you want or just left hanging here, whatever you wanna do. This is specifically targeted toward people that are already using data stores within their games. Um, so I'm not gonna go into what is a data store or anything like that in this video. So the way to connect to your data store is to open this up within the game that is in question. That's the best way to do it. And we'll go over how to override that setting using set place ID later, but the default and primary way to do this is to open up your game in which you wanna edit, and then go into this plugin and edit the data stores from there. So for this example, I have a data store with a name of test and the scope of test. Um, if you don't give it a scope, it defaults to global and then we'll click connect. Okay, so nothing is on screen yet. We have to actually set the key that we wanna access and load and then hit enter in order to actually load it. So let's query a key called test and we'll hit enter and we'll go and fetch the data. So we can see that the, the key is test and the value of that key is 20. Okay, so that's pretty useful. We can go in and quickly check on data and see what it is. And uh, that's pretty useful, but what more can we do? Well, we can also change that data. So if I double click on 20 here on the value, I'll get a little editor here. And now I can actually edit the value that's there. So let's say I wanna make it 32 instead. I do that, I hit enter, and it changes the value locally but in order to actually save it, we have to go over here and click this save icon. So that'll work for me right now. However, if you haven't configured your game yet, that might not work, that might throw an error and we get a little pop-up. Um, the way to fix that is to turn on uh, Studio API access to your game. So the way to do that is to go to your game settings, not your play setting, your game settings um, within here, and then we'll see this little box here, enable Studio access to API services you need to make sure that's checked if you wanna save new data. Now you can, edit, you can view it just fine without that checked, but if you wanna save, we need that checked. Okay, so let's try changing this value to something else. So maybe we want it to be a Boolean, so we'll make it true. And you'll see the color change there too. It will actually make an assumption as to what the type of the value is based on what you input. So in this case, I put in a Boolean, and so it assumed a Boolean value, and that's what we got. Same thing if we put in false, it'll do that too. Now, for whatever reason, we want that to be a string, like actual text, we can just wrap it in quotes. So we could do false like that, and we can see it shows up as a string. And so just like that too, uh, strings are pretty easy to make. If it cannot assume the value type, it will just default to a string. So without quotes, I could say, hello world, and it would make a string. Now again, these changes don't automatically save. You have to go up here and click the save button. And that's intentionally done so that we're not writing to the data store too much, only when we actually want to. Okay, so for long string values, uh, we'll see this little E here, and that stands for the extended editor. So if we click that, we'll see a larger editor pop up like this. And now we can edit a string, kind of a multi-line text mode, and this will also scroll as it gets sized up. So we can say, hello world, how are you? Good. And then we just click set, and we can see that it shows up. So again, we can click on this, click the exp expanded mode here, extended mode, and it will show up. Okay, so that works all right. But what about tables? So tables are a more complex data type and this editor will do its best to handle those as well. So if we click on this, let's just get rid of everything here. It's just an empty string, that's fine. And the way we can initialize tables within this little value editor is a JSON string. Now we don't have to worry about that too much. If you're unfamiliar with JSON, the way to initialize an empty table is just an open and a closed bracket and hit enter and that will do it. Now, a weird thing about data stores, um, for those who are not familiar with this concept, is that it doesn't allow what's called mixed data types. 
or I'm sorry, a mixed ar array, a mixed table. And so basically you cannot have both numeric indices and also non-numeric indices. The technical terms of those would probably be the difference between an array and a dictionary. And so when we initialize an empty table, it doesn't know what type of values, what type of table you want it to be. Uh, so we have to actually set that. And we do that by right clicking on our key and we can see two insert uh, options pop up. One for an array, one for a dictionary. So for this, let's imagine we're making some player data where we want to save the player's kills, their deaths, and their points. So for that, we would use a dictionary. So we'll click insert dictionary, and we have to give it a key to start off with. So let's try kills to begin with, and then we can expand this table and we'll see our item there. All right, so let's initialize this to zero. And then we can either click here now, it already knows the type, and so we just have an insert into value or option, that's it. We can also click on, right click on one of the sub items and also insert from there. So make a, a deaths item. And then points. And we'll initialize that to 10. Okay, and again, this doesn't save by default, so we have to go up here and click save. Now we can also make sub tables. So we could insert, we'll just call it another, and it'll be another table. But this time, you know, let's make it a blank table again and let's make it an array. So we'll click insert array. And now if we open it up, we'll see we have a numeric item there. Number one is item. And maybe we would just want to make this a list of names. So maybe this is Bob. And then we'll have Mary. And then John. Okay, simple enough. And with numeric arrays like this, we can manipulate these items a little differently. Whereas with the the string based keys, we can right click and we can only insert around them and delete. But with numeric indices, if we right click on them, we have some more options. We can insert an item before it, we can insert an item after it, or we can even move that value up or down or delete it. So let's say John, we want to move up one. So we can say move up and we see he moved up in the list. And maybe we want to delete them. So we can say delete. And maybe we want to insert a name after Bob. So we right click that and click insert after, and we have an item there. And again, we have to save explicitly, and there we go. All right, another powerful feature of this plugin is the ability to both import and export items into a key. So we have these little buttons here. The first one is for importing values in, and the other is for exporting values out. So in order to import in, all we have to click is this button and it's gonna prompt us for a Lua file. And that Lua file should look something like this, ignore some of the other stuff there. Just some sort of value that it returns and that's it. It doesn't have to be a table, it could just be some normal value, um, but it has to be a data store um, compatible value. So for this instance, I have just a simple table with some data there and we can try importing that. So if we click import, I can click data test.lua right there. I can open it and I see my data there. And again, it does not save by default. So we have to actually click save. But for this case, I don't want that data. So I'm just gonna clear that out and I'm gonna go back to the key and I'll see my old data there. And let's say I want to export that value out. So I can click the export uh, button right there. And that's gonna both generate a module script that has the data, but also if I wasn't in run mode right here, which I'm just in that kind of debug mode of the plugin, but if I wasn't and I was just in a normal studio mode, that would also prompt me to save the file externally as a .lua file. Okay, so we can also delete values. So if we want to just completely wipe this value from our data store, we can click the little delete icon right here, and that will prompt us again, whether or not we actually want to do this, we click delete, and the value is gone. Okay, so now we see the default page for if there is no data for a key. So it says no data, and we have a create data button. So this is what would happen if you go to any random key that you don't have any data for, it would say create data. <clears throat> so let's try that. If we click, click create data, 
we'll get, in, get a little context menu here to select the data type that we want. So it could be a string, a number, a boolean, and we have two options, true or false, just to shortcut it, and table. So for instance, if we want a string, we just click string, and there we go. Again, this is not saved by default, so we have to go over here and click save. Okay, so now let's look at ordered data stores. So if we go back over to our side menu here, there's also this setting right here that says use ordered data store. So if we check that, it will make sure to use ordered data stores instead of the default data stores. Now I already have some data within a test test ordered data store, so I'm just going to connect to that. And right away you see some values, All right? Pretty straightforward. So the way that we can uh, kind of scan through this information is quite simple. So data store, order data stores are kind of weird the way they work. They, you can query the data in pages. So you only can query so much data at once, but you, all, you see all the keys. So in order to move around these pages, we have these little arrows here and we can kind of click on that to move. And now, You'll, you'll see the current page is shown there, but we don't know how many pages there are. And this is just a limitation of order data stores is there's no way to actually query the number of pages there are until you get to the very last page, which in this case is five. And now we can make the assumption there's five pages and move around like that. Um, but regardless, it'll let you move around, query that data just as you wish. We can also add um, some parameters for how we want this query. So we can set the minimum and maximum value so maybe the minimum value, we want only values over 50. I think that is inclusive. So I click that and yep, we've trimmed off some and we only want values under 100. So we can do that. And just like that, we see we've clamped our values. Um, this is an either or, so we can get rid of one if we wanted, doesn't matter. So maybe you want to change this to 60. We can also change whether we want it to ascend or descend and we click this button to change that. So pretty straightforward. And lastly, we can also query one of these individual keys uh, within here. So this key option here, we can do test 2022, for instance. And just like that, we've gotten the value. So from there, we can also change this to whatever we want. Now, order data stores only allow numeric integers. So we can't add anything else other than a number within that value. Um, additionally, we can also double click here and change the value. Now what's different about this than the default data stores is this will save when we change the value. So if we change this to 95 to 96 and click enter, it is actually going to write that to the data store. Okay, so now let's look at connections. So we've been connecting to a data store like this, giving it a name and a scope and whether or not to use an order data store. But we can also save these connections for further use later if we want. So, you know, we have a test test. Um, now I already have some saved, so let's look at that too first. So if I click this little icon here, I'm gonna get a list of data store connections that I've saved. Now I have one that's called test, one that's called ABC test, and we can filter these if we have a lot. So we can just quickly find ones that we want based on the name. And this, this filter will also include the, the name and scope. Um, so that's kind of useful. Uh, now, if we want to use one of these, all we have to do is click the little loader icon and we'll see it populates our information there. Now, we, we can also delete them. So if I want to delete all of them, there you go. And again, now that I'm over here, if I have a, a test and a test, I can click the save button and I can give it a name. My test and click save. Now, one thing to, to note right here is that it has a game ID. And the reason for that is a connection is linked to a game ID, not a police ID, a game ID. And this is important because when you go over to load, it's only going to show you connections that are linked to your current game ID. So if you go to a different game of yours and you try to see your loaded connect, your, your saved connections, you're not going to see them there because it's linked to that game. And that's just to help organization and to prevent confusion um, and collisions with names. All right, so that's pretty simple. Now the way uh, to manage this is again to come into our load screen here and we can load or delete and cancel and et cetera. Now you notice if you load a saved value or type in one that's already saved with these parameters, you won't get that save icon. 
That's a quick way to tell you either you don't have the right parameters in or you already have one that's saved. Okay, so the very last feature to look at is the set place ID button here. So if I click that, I'm gonna see this little pop up and it's gonna give me the option to put in a place ID, not a game ID, a place ID. And it will populate the name of that place here just to kind of verify on our end that we put in the right one. And then we can click place set place ID and that's gonna set the place ID within Studio currently. Now, as you can see from this warning here, this is not recommended. Ideally, you would just open up your place and do it. Um, I would suggest doing that almost as much as you can, but if for whatever reason you cannot, this is a way to do it. So the way again we do it is just by importing or, or just pasting our place ID into there. Now what's nice about it too is that while we could just grab the place ID there too, we can also just copy the whole URL here. And if we paste that in, it'll work too. It'll parse out the ID properly. Then you'll see that it populated the right place ID for me and the right place name there. And we set place and that would be it. I'm not gonna do that though for this. So click cancel. And I think that covers just about everything we have to give you.